Welcome everybody to another installment of Hearts of Iron. This presentation has been brought to you by PP Gatorade. PP Gatorade, the number one sports drink for PP by PP. All right, now y'all, first things first, we gonna subscribe to Road to 56 on a Steam Workshop, because if you ain't got Road to 56, what is you even doing? All right, now we gonna do some crazy stuff y'all never expected. We gonna scroll on over to Canada. We gonna click on Canada. We gonna hit start, because we playing Canada. All right, when you load in, you're gonna take a look around your nation, see what's what, see how people are faring, and then you're gonna be shocked by the fact that you actually have a fair military. Now, nowhere compared to the United States, but good enough. Next, you're gonna go to your national focus tree, and you're just gonna pick a focus that suits you. After doing all that, you're going to make a bold promise that you'll never follow up on. Um, and we're going to have to push quickly for the U.S. is actually the goal here. And I think I might have already screwed up with that. Realize that you picked the wrong national focus and then start building some military factories. Now you're going to check a Rooney on over to that infantry template and be surprised when it's basically 20 with and won't cost you much experience to modify. After feeling good about that, you can check your logistics tab and realize you're about 6,000 infantry equipment behind from the start, which makes no god dang sense. Now go ahead and correct your mistake on your national focus. Then fast forward, go ahead and grab that collectivist ethos. Once you've done that, don't forget you need to grab a fascist demagogue in order to secure that hot, hot unitary Canada under your grasp. Fast forward two years and... Oh my god, that flag's so cool! Observe the Unitary Canada flag. Notice how it makes your pants wet. That is likely because of all of the nut that has released upon observing the flag. Now that you have made Canada officially fascist, realize that it's 1938 and you still don't have enough troops to go to war with the US. In spite of that fact, you will continue to build up and prepare for war nonetheless. Never forget to look at your logistics tab to realize how fucked you are and how unlikely it is that you'll win this war because you can't keep up with production and therefore cannot train troops. Cut to 1939, realize you were still not at war with the US train a shit ton of troops to try and redeem this situation that you have put yourself into. Okay, it's basically 1940 and you've got troops, so go ahead and justify against the United States. Now is it too late and are you probably going to lose this war? Sure, but it never hurts to try. Well, it's been done. The moment you've all been waiting for. The justification against the United States is complete. You must pursue this journey, otherwise you shall, in fact, look like a bitch. And you don't want to look like a bitch in front of the Americans, because you are not, in fact, a pussy. So go ahead and give your troops a rousing speech so that they can prepare themselves for the journey ahead. Oh, you... you fools. And I say you fools, and we're going to get decimated. And I'm not even gonna save. I, I literally was about to cancel the declaration of war just to save. You guys aren't even in position, but it does not matter to me. Now we're going to go ahead and speed up the video, so that way you can see how successful I am in uh, infiltrating the United States and all of their capitalist virtues. I, freedom we're taking. We're invading. Why are we invading the United States again?
Now, the reason I stopped here is because at this stage in the game we reach a critical juncture in which the US formally decided to join the Allies. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the United Kingdom is a part of the Allies. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the United Kingdom has land on Canada. So what effectively was happening was that Canada was being invaded by the UK, a mass force of the UK in the north, and we had no way to possibly repel that. Then, a light bulb struck, and probably one of the most ingenious plans I ever had in playing this game occurred to me all on my own with no assistance from anybody else and that was to free Quebec oh my gosh ah, quickly oh that was so baller that was so baller I completely forgot that that's where Quebec was! Oh my gosh, dude! Now you're probably thinking, releasing Canada, well, that's awesome. You just removed a whole front that you don't have to deal with anymore, and you can maybe resurrect this war to a degree. Well, joke's on you. I couldn't. Why? Because the entire Allies were pouring through the U.S. borders, just set out to kill Unitary Canada. So how do you win an unwinnable war? Well, I'll show you. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, the official start of the stream. <laughs> Nothing happened before this, don't worry about it. Now there are a couple of lessons to be learned here. First off, never attack the United States later than 1938. I mean, that's pretty common sense, but uh, I thought I could get away with it, and um, obviously I couldn't. Second lesson, when in doubt, release and play Quebec. Why? Because why not? I mean, you don't get any other opportunity to play Quebec, so uh, just go ahead and go for it. Now, you may call me a little puss magus, and you may say that, Oh, Bevo, you, you fucking suck at Hearts of Iron. I've played Canada a million times, and I've destroyed the U.S. And it's like, okay, well, that's great. Well, some of us like to go down the more difficult path, or right? we go a little more challenging. We like to pace ourselves, put ourselves in an unwinnable war and see what we can do, what creative solutions we can come up with. And uh, if you get a problem with mine, well, you've got the right to have that problem, and I do suck at this game, probably. So, uh, thanks for watching. Quebec out! Re Qu'on a pris pour dire je t'aime C'est le seul qui reste au bout de nos jours Les vœux que l'on fait, les fleurs que l'on sème Chacun les récolte en soi-même 